I'm Ron Clark and I'm with the Evolutionary Studies Institute of the University of the Witwatersrand. Since 1991, I've been directing excavations and some research at Stokefontein Caves. Most of my time has been taken up with a very important discovery, that of a complete skeleton of an Australopithecus that is well known as Littlefoot. It is the only complete or virtually complete Australopithecus skeleton from anywhere and furthermore it is the oldest Australopithecus in southern Africa and it has been dated to 3.67 million years ago. So it's going to tell us a lot about our early ancestry. Littlefoot was found in uh, 1997 by um, myself and Stephen Motsumi and Nkwani Malefi. We located it deep within the Sturkfontein Caves where we began excavating. I was going through some boxes of material that was blasted out by lime miners probably in the 1920s and I discovered an ankle bone, a talus as we call it, of a hominid. And I said, good grief, what's this doing here? But then I found three more bones that linked onto it, leading down towards the big toe. A couple of years later, in a different box, in a different locality at, at Witts University Medical School, I discovered more of the same foot and also parts of the lower legs. So this made me realize that the rest of the skeleton might still be in the cave. So I gave a cast of the lower tibia or shin bone to my two assistants, Stephen Motsumi and Nkwani Malefi, and asked them to go down in the cave with torches and see if they could find anywhere that piece would fit on. Well, after one and a half days of searching in the dark with their handheld lamps, Surprisingly, they found it. The bones, uh, when we first found them, we were expecting to find everything just lying there, all connected. It didn't work that way. We found not only that the bones were extremely soft, powdery and flaky, but they were embedded in a natural concrete that we call breccia, extremely hard. Not only that, but after we'd uncovered some of the lower legs, we found no more. We kept on chiseling and chiseling away at the very big blocks of dolomite and chert that were covering uh, the bones, uh, looking for more of it. Uh, upslope, we, we worked away upslope, didn't find any more until I concluded that the rest of it must have fallen through to a lower level millions of years ago and then been sealed in by a very thick flowstone. So we chiseled through that flowstone and then we found more of the skeleton. By that stage, we were using very fine tools, something we call an air scribe, which is a little pneumatically driven needle. Uh, so we were working away a grain at a time, grains of rock at a time, uh, wearing magnifying lenses and searching for more of this uh, skeleton. We worked on it right up until 2012, excavating there in the caves and exposing all of the bones and then we lifted it to the surface and since 2012 we've been busy with the preparation of the bones in the laboratory cleaning out all the fragments and reconstructing them. There is always some degree of luck involved in the discovery of especially a, a major fossil find. Usually the luck is on the side of the discoverer, him or herself. In this case, I think one can easily make the case that it was the fossil, Littlefoot itself, that was lucky to be discovered by Ron Clark because he is uh, one of the world's very best uh, uh, excavators and uh, 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 of uh, hominid fossils. Um, there, it, it's an incredibly skilled process um, that is involved uh, in requiring a remarkable knowledge of anatomy, incredible uh, patience, 
uh, and very steady hands. Uh, I like to refer to Ron as the paleo surgeon, uh, for he has, um, throughout his career, uh, demonstrated uh, unparalleled ability to reconstruct very fragmentary and very important fossil hominid uh, finds. Uh, Littlefoot was lucky to have waited for 3.67 million years for Ron to come around and find her. Witts University has a very good relationship with PAST, uh, which is a non-government organization with whom Witts partners in supporting and funding the paleosciences. That includes uh, paleontology, paleoanthropology, and paleobotany. Now, PAST was founded in 1994 at a time when Sturkfontein was under threat of closure because of lack of funding. So PAST, with its sponsor, Standard Bank, uh, came to our rescue and more recently, another sponsor is JP Morgan, and they've been providing us with funding which has enabled our work to continue through many, many years. And I am confident that they are going to continue to fund us in ensuing years to see this project through to completion, and hopefully other projects as well which are related to Sturkfontein.